Deer, singular and plural, are the hoofed ruminant mammals forming the family Cervidae. The two main groups of deer are the Cervinae, including the munchak, the elk wapiti, the fallow deer, and the cheetal, and the caprilini, including the reindeer, caribou, the roe deer, and the moose. Female reindeer, and male deer of all species except the Chinese water deer, grow and shed new antlers each year. In this they differ from permanently horned antelope, which are part of a different family, Bovidae, within the same order of even toed ungulates Artiodactyla. The musk deer, Moscodi, of Asia and Chevrotains, Trigulidae, of tropical African and Asian forests are separate families within the ruminant clade, Ruminantia. They are no more closely related to deer than are other even toed ungulates. Deer appear in art from Paleolithic cave paintings onwards, and they have played a role in mythology, religion, and literature throughout history, as well as in heraldry. Their economic importance includes the use of their meat as venison, their skins as soft, strong buckskin, and their antlers as handles for knives. Deer hunting has been a popular activity since at least the Middle Ages and remains a resource for many families today. Topic. Distribution Deer live in a variety of biomes, ranging from tundra to the tropical rainforest. While often associated with forests, many deer are ecotone species that live in transitional areas between forests and thickets for cover and prairie and savanna open space. The majority of large deer species inhabit temperate mixed deciduous forest, mountain mixed coniferous forest, tropical seasonal, dry forest, and savanna habitats around the world. Clearing open areas within forests to some extent may actually benefit deer populations by exposing the understory and allowing the types of grasses, weeds, and herbs to grow that deer like to eat. Additionally, access to adjacent croplands may also benefit deer. However, adequate forest or brush cover must still be provided for populations to grow and thrive. Deer are widely distributed, with indigenous representatives in all continents except Antarctica and Australia, though Africa has only one native deer, the Barbary stag, a subspecies of red deer that is confined to the Atlas Mountains in the northwest of the continent. However, fallow deer have been introduced to South Africa. Small species of brocket deer and pudus of Central and South America, and muntjacs of Asia generally occupy dense forests and are less often seen in open spaces, with the possible exception of the Indian muntjac. There are also several species of deer that are highly specialized, and live almost exclusively in mountains, grasslands, swamps, and wet savannas, or riparian corridors surrounded by deserts. Some deer have a circumpolar distribution in both North America and Eurasia. Examples include the caribou that live in Arctic tundra and taiga boreal forests, and moose that inhabit taiga and adjacent areas. Humal deer taruka and Chilean humal of South America's Andes fill the ecological niches of the ibex and wild goat, with the fawns behaving more like goat kids. The highest concentration of large deer species in temperate North America lies in the Canadian Rocky Mountain and Columbia Mountain regions between Alberta and British Columbia where all five North American deer species white-tailed deer, mule deer, caribou, elk, and moose can be found. This region has several clusters of national parks including Mount Revelstoke National Park, Glacier National Park Canada, Yoho National Park, and Kootenay National Park on the British Columbia side, and Banff National Park, Jasper National Park, and Glacier National Park US on the Alberta and Montana sides. Mountain slope habitats vary from moist coniferous, mixed forested habitats to dry subalpine, pine forests with alpine meadows higher up. The foothills and river valleys between the mountain ranges provide a mosaic of cropland and deciduous parklands. The rare woodland caribou have the most restricted range living at higher altitudes in the subalpine meadows and alpine tundra areas of some of the mountain ranges. Elk and mule deer both migrate between the alpine meadows and lower coniferous forests and tend to be most common in this region. Elk also inhabit river valley bottomlands, which they share with white-tailed deer. The white-tailed deer have recently expanded their range within the foothills and river valley bottoms of the Canadian Rockies owing to conversion of land to cropland and the clearing of coniferous forests allowing more deciduous vegetation to grow up the mountain slopes. They also live in the Aspen parklands north of Calgary and Edmonton, where they share habitat with the moose. The adjacent Great Plains grassland habitats are left to herds of elk, American bison, and pronghorn antelope.
The Eurasian continent including the Indian subcontinent boasts the most species of deer in the world, with most species being found in Asia. Europe, in comparison, has lower diversity in plant and animal species. However, many national parks and protected reserves in Europe do have populations of red deer, roe deer, and fallow deer. These species have long been associated with the continent of Europe, but also inhabit Asia Minor, the Caucasus Mountains, and northwestern Iran. European Fallow deer historically lived over much of Europe during the Ice Ages, but afterwards became restricted primarily to the Anatolian Peninsula, in present-day Turkey. Present-day fallow deer populations in Europe are a result of historic man-made introductions of this species, first to the Mediterranean regions of Europe, then eventually to the rest of Europe. They were initially park animals that later escaped and re-established themselves in the wild. Historically, Europe's deer species shared their deciduous forest habitat with other herbivores, such as the extinct tarpan forest horse, extinct aurochs forest ox, and the endangered wisent European bison. Good places to see deer in Europe include the Scottish Highlands, the Austrian Alps, the wetlands between Austria, Hungary, and the Czech Republic and some fine national parks, including Donana National Park in Spain, the Velua in the Netherlands, the Ardennes in Belgium, and Bielawiesa National Park of Poland. Spain, Eastern Europe, and the Caucasus Mountains still have virgin forest areas that are not only home to sizable deer populations but also for other animals that were once abundant such as the wisent, Eurasian lynx, Iberian lynx, wolves, and brown bears. The highest concentration of large deer species in temperate Asia occurs in the mixed deciduous forests, mountain coniferous forests, and taiga bordering North Korea, Manchuria northeastern China, and the Ushuri region Russia. These are among some of the richest deciduous and coniferous forests in the world where one can find Siberian roe deer, sika deer, elk, and moose. Asian caribou occupy the northern fringes of this region along the Sino-Russian border. Deer such as the sika deer, Thorold's deer, Central Asian red deer, and elk have historically been farmed for their antlers by Han Chinese, Turkic peoples, Tungusic peoples, Mongolians, and Koreans. Like the Sami people of Finland and Scandinavia, the Tungusic peoples, Mongolians, and Turkic peoples of southern Siberia, northern Mongolia, and the Ushuri region have also taken to raising semi-domesticated herds of Asian caribou. The highest concentration of large deer species in the tropics occurs in southern Asia in India's Indo-Gangetic Plain region and Nepal's Terai region. These fertile plains consist of tropical seasonal moist deciduous, dry deciduous forests, and both dry and wet savannas that are home to cheetal, hog deer, barasinga, Indian sambar, and Indian muntjac. Grazing species such as the endangered barasinga and very common cheetal are gregarious and live in large herds. Indian sambar can be gregarious but are usually solitary or live in smaller herds. Hog deer are solitary and have lower densities than Indian muntjac. Deer can be seen in several national parks in India, Nepal, and Sri Lanka of which Kanha National Park, Dudwa National Park, and Chitwan National Park are most famous. Sri Lanka's Wilpatu National Park and Yala National Park have large herds of Indian sambar and cheetal. The Indian sambar are more gregarious in Sri Lanka than other parts of their range and tend to form larger herds than elsewhere. The Chao Phraya River Valley of Thailand was once primarily tropical seasonal moist deciduous forest and wet savanna that hosted populations of hog deer, the now extinct Schomburgs deer, Elds deer, Indian sambar, and Indian muntjac. Both the hog deer and Elds deer are rare, whereas Indian sambar and Indian muntjac thrive in protected national parks, such as Khao Yai. Many of these South Asian and Southeast Asian deer species also share their habitat with other herbivores, such as Asian elephants, the various Asian rhinoceros species, various antelope species, such as Nilgai, four-horned antelope, blackbuck, and Indian gazelle in India, and wild oxen, such as wild Asian water buffalo, gaua, banting, and kupre. One way that different herbivores can survive together in a given area is for each species to have different food preferences, although there may be some overlap. Australia has six introduced species of deer that have established sustainable wild populations from acclimatization society releases in the 19th century. These are the fallow deer, red deer, sambar, hog deer, rusa, and cheetal. Red deer introduced into New Zealand in 1851 from English and Scottish stock were domesticated in deer farms by the late 1960s and are common farm animals there now. 
Seven other species of deer were introduced into New Zealand but none are as widespread as red deer. Topic. Description Deer constitute the second most diverse family of Artiodactyla after bovids. Though of a similar build, deer are strongly distinguished from antelopes by their antlers, which are temporary and regularly regrown unlike the permanent horns of bovids. Characteristics typical of deer include long, powerful legs, a diminutive tail and long ears. Deer exhibit a broad variation in physical proportions. The largest extant deer is the moose, which is nearly 2.6 meters (8.5 feet) tall and weighs up to 800 kilograms (1,800 pounds). The elk stands 1.4 to 2 meters (4.6 to 6.6 feet) at the shoulder and weighs 240 to 450 kilograms (530 to 990 pounds). On the contrary, the northern pudu is the smallest deer in the world. It reaches merely 32 to 35 centimeters (13 to 14 in) at the shoulder and weighs 3.3 to 6 kilograms (7.3 to 13.2 pounds). The southern pudu is only slightly taller and heavier. Sexual dimorphism is quite pronounced. In most species, males tend to be larger than females, and except for the reindeer, only males possess antlers. Coat color generally varies between red and brown, though it can be as dark as chocolate brown in the tufted deer or have a grayish tinge as in elk. Different species of brocket deer vary from gray to reddish brown in coat color. Several species, such as the cheetle, the fallow deer, and the seeker deer, feature white spots on a brown coat. Coat of reindeer shows notable geographical variation. Deer undergo two molts in a year, for instance, in red deer the red, thin-haired summer coat is gradually replaced by the dense, grayish-brown winter coat in autumn, which in turn gives way to the summer coat in the following spring. Molting is affected by the photoperiod. Deer are also excellent jumpers and swimmers. Deer are ruminants, or cud chewers, and have a four-chambered stomach. Some deer, such as those on the island of Rum, do consume meat when it is available. Nearly all deer have a facial gland in front of each eye. The gland contains a strongly scented pheromone, used to mark its home range. Bucks of a wide range of species open these glands wide when angry or excited. All deer have a liver without a gallbladder. Deer also have a tapetum lucidum, which gives them sufficiently good night vision. Topic. Antlers All male deer possess antlers, with the exception of the water deer, in which males have long tusk-like canines that reach below the lower jaw. Females generally lack antlers, though female reindeer bear antlers smaller and less branched than those of the males. Occasionally females in other species may develop antlers, especially in telemetocarpal deer such as European roe deer, red deer, white-tailed deer and mule deer and less often in plesiometocarpal deer. A study of antlered female white-tailed deer noted that antlers tend to be small and malformed, and are shed frequently around the time of parturition. The fallow deer and the various subspecies of the reindeer have the largest as well as the heaviest antlers, both in absolute terms as well as in proportion to body mass, an average of 8 grams .28 ounces, per kilogram of body mass. The tufted deer, on the other hand, has the smallest antlers of all deer, while the pudu has the lightest antlers with respect to body mass, 0.6 grams. 0.021 ounces per kilogram of body mass. The structure of antlers show considerable variation. While fallow deer and elk antlers are palmate with a broad central portion, white-tailed deer antlers include a series of tines sprouting upward from a forward curving main beam, and those of the pudu are mere spikes. Antler development begins from the pedicel, a bony structure that appears on the top of the skull by the time the animal is a year old. The pedicel gives rise to a spiky antler the following year, that is replaced by a branched antler in the third year. This process of losing a set of antlers to develop a larger and more branched set continues for the rest of the life. The antlers emerge as soft tissues, known as velvet antlers, and progressively harden into bony structures, known as hard antlers. Following mineralization and blockage of blood vessels in the tissue, from the tip to the base, antlers might be one of the most exaggerated male secondary sexual characteristics, and are intended primarily for reproductive success through sexual selection and for combat. The tines forks, on the antlers create grooves that allow another male's antlers to lock into place. 
This allows the males to wrestle without risking injury to the face. Antlers are correlated to an individual's position in the social hierarchy and its behavior. For instance, the heavier the antlers, the higher the individual's status in the social hierarchy, and the greater the delay in shedding the antlers. Males with larger antlers tend to be more aggressive and dominant over others. Antlers can be an honest signal of genetic quality. Males with larger antlers relative to body size tend to have increased resistance to pathogens and higher reproductive capacity. In elk in Yellowstone National Park, antlers also provide protection against predation by wolves. Topic. Teeth Most deer bear 32 teeth, the corresponding dental formula is, 0.0.3, 33.1.3.3. The elk and the reindeer may be exceptions, as they may retain their upper canines and thus have 34 teeth, dental formula, 0.1.3, 33.1.3.3. The Chinese water deer, tufted deer, and muntjac have enlarged upper canine teeth forming sharp tusks, while other species often lack upper canines altogether. The cheek teeth of deer have crescent ridges of enamel, which enable them to grind a wide variety of vegetation. The teeth of deer are adapted to feeding on vegetation, and like other ruminants, they lack upper incisors, instead having a tough pad at the front of their upper jaw. Topic. Biology Topic. Diet Deer are browsers, and feed primarily on leaves. They have small, unspecialized stomachs by ruminant standards, and high nutrition requirements. Rather than eating and digesting vast quantities of low-grade fibrous food as, for example, sheep and cattle do, deer select easily digestible shoots, young leaves, fresh grasses, soft twigs, fruit, fungi, and lichens. The low-fibered food, after minimal fermentation and shredding, passes rapidly through the alimentary canal. The deer require a large amount of minerals such as calcium and phosphate in order to support antler growth, and this further necessitates a nutrient-rich diet. There are, however, some reports of deer engaging in carnivorous activity, such as depredating the nests of northern bogwhites. Topic. Reproduction Nearly all cervids are so-called uniparental species, the fawns are only cared for by the mother, known as a doe. A doe generally has one or two fawns at a time triplets, while not unknown, are uncommon. Mating season typically begins in later August and lasts until December. Some species mate until early March. The gestation period is anywhere up to 10 months for the European roe deer. Most fawns are born with their fur covered with white spots, though in many species they lose these spots by the end of their first winter. In the first 20 minutes of a fawn's life, the fawn begins to take its first steps. Its mother licks it clean until it is almost free of scent, so predators will not find it. Its mother leaves often to graze, and the fawn does not like to be left behind. Sometimes its mother must gently push it down with her foot. The fawn stays hidden in the grass for one week until it is strong enough to walk with its mother. The fawn and its mother stay together for about one year. A male usually leaves and never sees his mother again, but females sometimes come back with their own fawns and form small herds. Topic. Disease In some areas of the UK, deer, especially fallow deer due to their gregarious behaviour, have been implicated as a possible reservoir for transmission of bovine tuberculosis, a disease which in the UK in 2005 cost £90 million in attempts to eradicate. In New Zealand, deer thought to be important as vectors picking up M. bovis in areas where brushtail possums Trichosaurus vulpecula are infected, and transferring it to previously uninfected possums when their carcasses are scavenged elsewhere. The white-tailed deer Odicoileus virginianus has been confirmed as the sole maintenance host in the Michigan outbreak of bovine tuberculosis which remains a significant barrier to the U.S. nationwide eradication of the disease in livestock. Moose and deer can carry rabies. Docile moose may suffer from brain worm, a helminth which drills holes through the brain in its search for a suitable place to lay its eggs. 
the government biologist states that, "...they move around looking for the right spot and never really find it." Deer appear to be immune to this parasite, it passes through the digestive system and is excreted in the feces. The parasite is not screened by the moose intestine, and passes into the brain where damage is done that is externally apparent, both in behavior and in gait. Deer, elk and moose in North America may suffer from chronic wasting disease, which was identified at a Colorado laboratory in the 1960s and is believed to be a prion disease. Out of an abundance of caution hunters are advised to avoid contact with specified risk material SRM, such as the brain, spinal column or lymph nodes. Deboning the meat when butchering and sanitizing the knives and other tools used to butcher are amongst other government recommendations. Topic. Evolution Deer are believed to have evolved from antlerless, tusked ancestors that resembled modern dikers and diminutive deer in the early Eocene, and gradually developed into the first antlered cervoids, the superfamily of cervids and related extinct families, in the Miocene. Eventually, with the development of antlers, the tusks as well as the upper incisors disappeared. Thus evolution of deer took nearly 30 million years. Biologist Valerius Geist suggests evolution to have occurred in stages. There are not many prominent fossils to trace this evolution, but only fragments of skeletons and antlers that might be easily confused with false antlers of non-servid species. Topic. Eocene Epoch The ruminants, ancestors of the Cervidae, are believed to have evolved from Diacodexus, the earliest known artiodactyl, even toad ungulate, 50 to 55 Maya in the Eocene. Diacodexus, nearly the size of a rabbit, featured the tailless bone characteristic of all modern even toad ungulates. This ancestor and its relatives occurred throughout North America and Eurasia, but were on the decline by at least 46 Maya. Analysis of a nearly complete skeleton of Diacodexus discovered in 1982 gave rise to speculation that this ancestor could be closer to the non-ruminants than the ruminants. Andromeryx is another prominent prehistoric ruminant, but appears to be closer to the tragalids. Topic. Oligocene Epoch The formation of the Himalayas and the Alps brought about significant geographic changes. This was the chief reason behind the extensive diversification of deer-like forms and the emergence of cervids from the Oligocene to the early Pliocene. The latter half of the Oligocene 28 to 34 Maya, saw the appearance of the European Eumerics and the North American Leptomerics. The latter resembled modern-day bovids and cervids in dental morphology, for instance, it had brachiodont molars, while the former was more advanced. Other deer-like forms included the North American blastomerics and the European dremotherium. These saber-toothed animals are believed to have been the direct ancestors of all modern antlered deer, though they themselves lacked antlers. Another contemporaneous form was the four-horned protoceratid protoceras, that was replaced by syndioceras in the Miocene. These animals were unique in having a horn on the nose. Late Eocene fossils dated approximately 35 million years ago, which were found in North America, show that syndioceras had bony skull outgrowths that resembled non-deciduous antlers. Topic. Miocene epoch. Fossil evidence suggests that the earliest members of the superfamily Cervoidea appeared in Eurasia in the Miocene. Dicroceras, Euprox and Heteroprox were probably the first antlered cervids. Dicroceras featured single-forked antlers that were shed regularly. Stephanosemas had more developed and diffuse, crowned. Antlers, Procevulus, Paleomericidae, in addition to the tusks of Dremotherium, possessed antlers that were not shed. Contemporary forms such as the Mericodontans eventually gave rise to the modern pronghorn. The Cervinae emerged as the first group of extant cervids around 7 to 9 Maya, during the late Miocene in Central Asia. The tribe Muntiacini made its appearance as Muntiacus lalurensis around 7 to 8 Maya. The early Muntjacs varied in size as small as hares or as large as fallow deer. They had tusks for fighting and antlers for defense. Caprilini followed soon after, Orlini appeared 6.428.4 Maya. 
Around this period, the Tethys Ocean disappeared to give way to vast stretches of grassland, these provided the deer with abundant protein-rich vegetation that led to the development of ornamental antlers and allowed populations to flourish and colonize areas. As antlers had become pronounced, the canines were no more retained or were poorly represented, as in elk, probably because diet was no more browse dominated and antlers were better display organs. In muntjac and tufted deer, the antlers as well as the canines are small. The tragalids, however, possess long canines to this day. Topic. Pliocene epoch With the onset of the Pliocene, the global climate became cooler. A fall in the sea level led to massive glaciation, consequently, grasslands abounded in nutritious forage. Thus a new spurt in deer populations ensued. The oldest member of Savini, Cerviceris nevericii, appeared around the transition from Miocene to Pliocene 4.2 to 6 Maya in Eurasia. Servine fossils from early Pliocene to as late as the Pleistocene have been excavated in China and the Himalayas. While Cervus and Dharma appeared nearly 3 Maya, Axis emerged during the late Pliocene Pleistocene. The tribes Caprilini and Rangiferini appeared around 4 to 7 Maya. Around 5 Maya, the Rangiferines Brezia and Eocoileus were the first cervids to reach North America. This implies the Bering Strait could be crossed during the late Miocene Pliocene. This appears highly probable as the Camelids migrated into Asia from North America around the same time. Deer invaded South America in the late Pliocene 2.5 to 3 Maya as part of the Great American Interchange, thanks to the recently formed Isthmus of Panama, and emerged successful due to the small number of competing ruminants in the continent. Topic: <laughs> Pleistocene Epoch. Large deer with impressive antlers evolved during the early Pleistocene, probably as a result of abundant resources to drive evolution. The early Pleistocene cervid Euclidoceros was comparable in size to the modern elk. Megaloceros Pliocene Pleistocene featured the Irish elk, M. giganteus, one of the largest known cervids. The Irish elk reached 2 meters (6.6 feet) at the shoulder and had heavy antlers that spanned 3.6 meters (12 feet) from tip to tip. These large animals are thought to have faced extinction due to conflict between sexual selection for large antlers and body and natural selection for a smaller form. Meanwhile, the moose and reindeer radiated into North America from Siberia. Topic. Taxonomy and classification Deer constitute the artiodactyl family Cervidae. This family was first described by German zoologist Georg August Goldfuss in Handbach der Zoologie 1820. Three subfamilies are recognized, Caprilini, first described by the English zoologist Joshua Brooks in 1828, Servinae, described by Goldfuss, and Hydropotony, first described by French zoologist Edouard Louis Trouasset in 1898. Other attempts at the classification of deer have been based on morphological and genetic differences. The Anglo-Irish naturalist Victor Brooke suggested in 1878 that deer could be bifurcated into two classes on the according to the features of the second and fifth metacarpal bones of their forelimbs, plesiometacarpalia, most old world deer, and telemetacarpalia, most new world deer. He treated the musk deer as a cervid, placing it under telemetacarpalia. While the telemetacarpal deer showed only those elements located far from the joint, the plesiometacarpal deer retained the elements closer to the joint as well. Differentiation on the basis of deployed number of chromosomes in the late 20th century has been flawed by several inconsistencies. In 1987, the zoologists Colin Groves and Peter Grubb identified three subfamilies, Cervinae, Hydropotony, and Odicoilini. They noted that the hydropotines lack antlers, and the other two subfamilies differ in their skeletal morphology. However, they reverted from this classification in 2000. Topic. External relationships Until the beginning of the 21st century it was understood that the family Moscidae is sister to Cervidae. 
However, a 2003 phylogenetic study by Alexandra Hassanen of National Museum of Natural History, France, and colleagues, based on mitochondrial and nuclear analyses, revealed that Moscidae and Bovidae form a clade sister to Cervidae. According to the study, Cervidae diverged from the Bovidae Moscidae clade 27 to 28 million years ago. A similar study in 2013 echoed the findings of this study. The following cladogram is based on the 2003 study. Topic: Internal relationships. A 2006 phylogenetic study of the internal relationships in Cervidae by Clement Gilbert and colleagues divided the family into two major clades: Caprilinae (telemetocarpal or New World deer) and Cervinae (plesiometocarpal or Old World deer). Studies in the late 20th century suggested a similar bifurcation in the family. This as well as previous studies support monophyly in Cervinae, while Caprilinae appears paraphyletic. The 2006 study identified two lineages in Cervinae, Savini comprising the genera Axis, Cervus, Dharma and Rusivus, and Muntiacini Muntiacus and Elephidus. Caprilini featured three lineages, Orlini alces species, Capriolini capriolus and the subfamily Hydropotini and Rangiferini blastoceris, Hippocamelus, Mazama, Odiquilius, Pudu and Rangifer species. The following cladogram is based on the 2006 study. Topic. Extant subfamilies, genera and species The subfamily Caprilini consists of nine genera and 36 species, while Cervinae comprises 10 genera and 55 species. Hydropotony consists of a single species, the water deer H. Enormous, however, a 1998 study placed it under Caprilini. The following list is based on molecular and phylogenetic studies by zoologists such as Groves and Grubb. Subfamily Caprilini Odicoilini or New World deer Tribe Orlini Genus Alces Moose or Eurasian Elk A. Alces Tribe Capriolini Genus Capriolus Western Roe Deer C. Capriolus Eastern Roe Deer C. Pygargus, considered a subspecies of the Western Roe Deer until the late 20th century Tribe Rangiferini or Odicoilini Reindeer and New World Deer Genus Blastoceros Marsh Deer B. Dichotomous Genus Hippocamelus Taruka H. Antisensus Humul H. Bisulcus Genus Mazama Grey Brocket M. Guazubira Amazonian Brown Brocket M. Namorivaga, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Grey Brocket Brazilian Brocket M. Superciliaris, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Grey Brocket Colombian brocket M. Sanctimartii, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of grey brocket Ecuador brocket M. Moralia, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the grey brocket Isla San Jose brocket M. Permira, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the grey brocket Northern Venezuelan brocket M. Ceta, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of grey brocket Peruvian brocket M. Shudi, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the grey brocket Rodin M. Rondoni, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the grey brocket Little red brocket M. Rufina Pygmy brocket M. Nana, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of little red brocket Merida brocket M. Brycenii Dwarf brocket M. Chunyi, sometimes considered a subspecies of the Merida brocket Red brocket M. Americana Brazilian red brocket M. Jucunda, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the red brocket Central American red brocket M. Temama, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the red brocket Colombian red brocket M. Zeta, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the red brocket Ecuador red brocket M. Gualia, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the red brocket Peruvian red brocket M. Zamora, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the red brocket Southern red brocket M. Whiteley, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the red brocket Trinidad red brocket M. Trinitatis, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the red brocket Small red brocket or Bororo M. Bororo 
Yucatan brown brocket M. Pandora, formerly considered to be a subspecies of the grey brocket or the red brocket Genus Odocoileus Mule deer O. Hemionus White-tailed deer O. Virginianus Genus Ozotoceros Pampas deer O. Bezorticus Genus Pudu Northern Pudu P. Mephistophiles Southern Pudu P. Pudu Genus Rangifa Reindeer or caribou R. Tarandus Subfamily Servinae Old World deer Tribe Savini True deer Genus Axis formerly considered to be a subgenus of Cervus Cheetal A. Axis Sri Lankan Axis deer A. Axis salinensis Genus Cervus Red deer C. Elephus Maril deer C. Maril, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the West European red deer Corsican red deer C. Corsicanus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the West European red deer Yarkand deer C. Yarkandensis, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the West European red deer Bactrian deer C. Bactrianus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the West European red deer Thorold's deer, C. albirostris. Sika deer, C. nippon. Vietnamese deer, C. pseudaxis, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Sika deer. Tsushima island deer, C. pulchellus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Sika deer. Formosan deer, C. taiwanus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Sika deer. Kashmir wapiti C. Hanglu, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the West European red deer or the American wapiti American wapiti elk C. canadensis Manchurian wapiti C. xanthopegus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the American wapiti Tibetan wapiti C. Wallichi, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the American wapiti Sichuan wapiti C. McNeely, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the American wapiti Alashan wapiti C. Alashanicus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the American wapiti Genus Dharma Fallow deer D. Dharma Persian fallow deer D. Mesopotamica Genus Elephurus Perry David's deer E. Davidianus Genus Hyelophus, formerly considered to be a subgenus of Axis. Borane deer H. Cooley. Calamian deer H. Calamianensis. Hog deer H. Porcinus. Indochinese hog deer H. Animiticus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the hog deer. Genus Panoliamunipur elds deer P. Eldi. Eastern elds deer P. Siamensis, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Manipa elds deer. Thamen P. Thamen, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Manipa elds deer. Genus Rusivus Barasinga R. Duvorshli Eastern Swamp deer R. Ranjitsinhi, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Barasinga. Western Swamp deer R. Branderi, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Barasinga. Genus Rusa sometimes considered synonymous to Cervus. Mindanao mountain deer R. nigellus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Philippine sambar Mindoro deer R. barandanus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Philippine sambar Philippine sambar R. marianus Prince Alfred's deer R. Alfredi Javan rusa R. timorensis Sambar deer R. unicolor Southeast Asian sambar R. equinus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the sambar deer. Tribe Muntiacini Genus Elephidus Tufted deer E. cephalophus Genus Muntiacus Anamite munchak M. tronsonensis Bornean yellow munchak M. atherodes Fees munchak M. feae Giant munchak M. buquongenesis Gongshan Munchak M. Gongshanensis Hairy Fronted Munchak M. Crinifrons Javan Munchak M. Munchak Black Legged Munchak M. Nagripes, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Javan Munchak Indian Munchak M. Aureus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Javan Munchak 
northern red munchak, M. vaginalis, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Javan munchak, Sri Lankan munchak, M. malabaricus, sometimes considered to be a subspecies of the Javan munchak, leaf munchak, M. putauensis, puhot munchak, M. puhotensis, Reeves's munchak, M. reevesi, Roosevelt's munchak, M. bruceveltorum, Sumatran munchak, M. montanum, Subfamily Hydropotony Tribe Hydropotony Genus Hydropots Water Deer H. Enormous Topic. Extinct subfamilies, genera and species The following is the classification of the extinct cervids with known fossil record Subfamily Procevulini Miocene genus Procevulus P. Dichotoma, Subfamily Cervinae, Old World Deer, Tribe Muntiacini, Muntjacks, Genus Dicroceras, D. Elegans, D. Facatus, D. Nicatus, D. Teres, D. Trilateralis, Genus Euprox, Robustus, E. Facatus, Genus Eustyloceros, Blainvillei, E. Hegengensis. E. Longquanensis E. Macy E. Podoplichkoi E. Propria Genus Muntiacus M. Lalaernsis M. Pliocenicus M. Polonicus Genus Paraservulus Genus Stephanismas, Actauensis S. Aralenesis S. Chinghinsis S. Palmatus S. Rucha S. Thomsoni, Tribe Savini, True Deer, Genus Allicinlophus, Genus Arvanocerosa, Julie, Genus Axis, A. Nesti, A. Eurigonos, Genus Candaratsevus, sometimes considered a subgenus as Megaloceros or synonym of Pramgaceros, possibly polyphyletic, C. Rethymnensis, C. Major. C. Dorothensis, C. Ropalophorus, C. Cretensis, Genus Servavitus, subgenus as Megaloceros, Genus Servus, C. Ertborni, C. Falconeri, C. Giganteus, C. Renanus, C. Lascrisensis, Genus Croistoceresque, Ramosus, Genus Damad, Dolichipsis, D. Ensifer, D. Lavacornis, D. Virginiana, D. Whitney, Genus Elephurus, E. Formosanus, E. Mesesianus, E. Bifurcatus, E. Shikamai, Genus Euclidoceros, Euclidoceros tetraceros, Genus Gona, G. Sinhalea, Genus Megaloceros M. Antecedens, M. Giganteus, Genus Neomegaloceros, Genus Nesoliposaurus, Genus Orchinoceros, sometimes considered a subgenus as Megaloceros, Genus Pliocervus, Genus Pramgaceros, sometimes considered a subgenus as Megaloceros, P. Obscurus, P. Dawkinsi, P. Savini, P. Verticornis. P. Casiotti, Genus Prasinomegaceros, sometimes considered a subgenus as Megaloceros, P. Venustus, P. Asiaticus, Genus Selcupsoceros, Genus Pseudodama, Genus Rusivus, Schomburg's deer, R. Schomburgi, Sinomegaceros, sometimes considered a subgenus as Megaloceros, S. Luochwanensis, S. Pachyosteus. Subfamily Caprilini, New World or Telemetcarpal deer. Tribe Caprilini. Genus Bretzia. B. Pseudalsis. B. Nebrasensis. Genus Capriolus. C. Constantini. C. Susanbornensis. Genus Servalsis. Equals Alsis. C. Latifrons. C. Scotti. Genus Libralsis, equals Servalsis or Alsis L. Gallicus 
L. Reynolds E. Genus Procapriolus P. Husinus P. Moldavicus P. Stenos P. Ukrainicus Genus Pseudalsus P. Mirandus P. Wenzensis Tribe Rangiferini Genus Agalmacerus A. Blicky Genus Antifa A. Ultra A. Crassus Genus Blastocerus B. Extraneous B. Arpatianus Genus Charitoceros Genus Eocoilius E. Gentriorum Genus Epuricerus E. Proximus E. Truncus Genus Maureenlifus M. Luyanensis M. Brachiosaurus M. Fragilis Genus Odocoilius O. Brachiodontus O. Dolichipsis O. Labicornus O. Celadzii O. Leucosi Genus Tyrontoceros T. Hyposius Topic: Human interaction. Topic: In prehistory, deer were an important source of food for early hominids. In China, Homo erectus fed upon the seeker deer, while the red deer was hunted in Germany. In the Upper Paleolithic, the reindeer was the staple food for Cro-Magnon people, while the cave paintings at Lasso in southwestern France include some 90 images of stags. Topic: In history. Deer had a central role in the ancient art, culture and mythology of the Hittites, the ancient Egyptians, the Celts, the ancient Greeks, the Asians and several others. For instance, the stag hunt mosaic of ancient Pella, under the Kingdom of Macedonia, 4th century BC, possibly depicts Alexander the Great hunting a deer with Hephaestion. In Japanese Shintoism, the seeker deer is believed to be a messenger to the gods. In China, deer are associated with great medicinal significance. Deer penis is thought by some in China to have aphrodisiac properties. Spotted deer are believed in China to accompany the god of longevity. Deer was the principal sacrificial animal for the Huichol Indians of Mexico. In medieval Europe, deer appeared in hunting scenes and coats of arms. Deer are depicted in many materials by various pre-Hispanic civilizations in the Andes. The common male first name Oscar is taken from the Irish language, where it is derived from two elements, the first, os, means, deer. The second element, cara, means, friend. The name is borne by a famous hero of Irish mythology, Oscar, grandson of Fionn Mac Cumhale. The name was popularized in the 18th century by James Macpherson, creator of Oceanic poetry. Topic: In literature, deer have been an integral part of fables and other literary works since the inception of writing. Stags were used as symbols in the latter Sumerian writings. For instance, the boat of Sumerian god Enki is named the stag of Azbu. There are several mentions of the animal in the Rigveda as well as the Bible. In the Indian epic Ramayana, Sita is lured by a golden deer which Rama tries to catch. In the absence of both Rama and Laxman, Ravana kidnaps Sita. Many of the allegorical Aesop's fables, such as, The Stag at the Pool, the one-eyed doe, and the stag and a lion, personify deer to give moral lessons. For instance, the sick stag gives the message that uncaring friends can do more harm than good. The Yaqui deer song accompanies the deer dance which is performed by a pascola from the Spanish pascua, Easter dancer, also known as a deer dancer. Pascolas would perform at religious and social functions many times of the year, especially during Lent and Easter. In one of Rudolf Erich Rasp's 1785 stories of Baron Munchausen's narrative of his marvelous travels and campaigns in Russia, the Baron encounters a stag while eating cherries and, without ammunition, fires the cherry pits at the stag with his musket, but it escapes. The next year, the Baron encounters a stag with a cherry tree growing from its head, presumably, this is the animal he had shot at the previous year. In Christmas lore, such as in the narrative poem, 
a visit from Saint Nicholas. Reindeer are often depicted pulling the sleigh of Santa Claus. Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings's Pulitzer Prize winning 1938 novel The Yearling was about a boy's relationship with a baby deer. The fiction book Fire Bringer is about a young fawn who goes on a quest to save the hurler, the deer kind. In the 1942 Walt Disney Pictures film, Bambi is a white-tailed deer, while in Felix Sultan's original 1923 book Bambi, A Life in the Woods, he is a roe deer. In C.S. Lewis's 1950 fantasy novel The Lion, The Witch and the Wardrobe The Adult Pevensies, now kings and queens of Narnia, chase the white stag on a hunt, as the stag is said to grant its captor a wish. The hunt is key in returning the Pevensies to their home in England. In the 1979 book The Animals of Farthing Wood, the great white stag is the leader of all the animals. <inaudible> heraldry Deer are represented in heraldry by the stag or hart, or less often, by the hind, and the brocket, a young stag up to two years, respectively. Stags' heads and antlers also appear as charges. The old name for deer was simply Seph, and it is chiefly the head that appears on the ancient arms. Examples of deer in coats of arms can be found in the arms of Hertfordshire, England, and its county town of Hartford, both are examples of canting arms. The deer appears on the arms of the Israeli Postal Authority. Coats of arms featuring deer include those of Dottenhausen, Tierrichen, Freolzheim, Bauen, Albstadt, and Dassel in Germany, of the Earls Bathurst in England, of Balakna, Russia, of Aland, Finland, of Gumnes, Hitra, Hartdal, Rendalen and Vos in Norway, of Jelinia Gora, Poland, of Umea, Sweden, of Queensland, Australia, of Cervera, Catalonia, of Northern Ireland, and of Chile. Topic. Economic significance Deer have long had economic significance to humans. Deer meat, known as venison, is highly nutritious and beneficial for human consumption, citation needed due to the inherently wild nature and diet of deer. Venison is most often obtained through deer hunting. In the United States, it is produced in small amounts compared to beef but still represents a significant trade. By 2012, some 25,000 tons of red deer were raised on farms in North America. The major deer-producing countries are New Zealand, the market leader, with Ireland, Great Britain and Germany. The trade earns over $100 million annually for these countries. The skins make a peculiarly strong, soft leather, known as buckskin. There is nothing special about skins with the fur on since the hair is brittle and soon falls off. The hoofs and horns are used for ornamental purposes, especially the antlers of the roe deer, which are utilized for making umbrella handles, and for similar purposes, elk horn is often employed in making knife handles. In China, a medicine is made from stag horn, and the antlers of certain species are eaten when in the velvet. Among the Inuit, the traditional ULU women's knife was made with an antler, horn, or ivory handle. Deer have long been bred in captivity as ornaments for parks, but only in the case of reindeer has thorough domestication succeeded. The Sami of Scandinavia and the Kola Peninsula of Russia and other nomadic peoples of northern Asia use reindeer for food, clothing, and transport. Deer bred for hunting are selected based on the size of the antlers. In North America, the reindeer, known there as caribou, is not domesticated or herded, but it is important as a quarry animal to the caribou Inuit. Automobile collisions with deer can impose a significant cost on the economy. In the U.S., about 1.5 million deer vehicle collisions occur each year, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Those accidents cause about 150 human deaths and $1.1 billion in property damage annually. In Scotland, several roads including the A82, the A87 and the A835 have had significant enough problems with deer vehicle collisions DVCs that sets of vehicle activated automatic warning signs have been installed along these roads. In some areas of the UK, deer, especially fallow deer due to their gregarious behavior, have been implicated as a possible reservoir for transmission of bovine tuberculosis, a disease which in the UK in 2005 cost 90 million pounds in attempts to eradicate in New Zealand, deer are thought to be important as vectors picking up M. bovis in areas where brushtail possums Trichosaurus vulpecula are infected, and transferring it to previously uninfected possums when their carcasses are scavenged elsewhere. 
The white-tailed deer Odocoileus virginianus has been confirmed as the sole maintenance host in the Michigan outbreak of bovine tuberculosis which remains a significant barrier to the U.S. nationwide eradication of the disease in livestock. In 2008, 733,998 licensed deer hunters killed approximately 489,922 white-tailed deer to procure venison, control the deer population, and minimize the spread of disease. These hunters purchased more than 1.5 million deer harvest tags. The economic value of deer hunting to Michigan's economy is substantial. For example, in 2006, hunters spent US$507 million hunting white-tailed deer in Michigan. Deer hunting is a popular activity in the U.S. that provides the hunter's family with high-quality meat and generates revenue for states and the federal government from the sales of licenses, permits and tags. The 2006 survey by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that licensed sales generate approximately $700 million annually. This revenue generally goes to support conservation efforts in the states where the licenses are purchased. Overall, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that big game hunting for deer and elk generates approximately $11.8 billion annually in hunting-related travel, equipment and related expenditures. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The word deer was originally broad in meaning, becoming more specific with time. Old English deer and Middle English dare meant a wild animal of any kind. Cognates of Old English deer in other dead Germanic languages have the general sense of animal, such as Old High German deer, Old Norse djur or deer, Gothic deus, Old Saxon deer, and Old Frisian deer. This general sense gave way to the modern English sense by the end of the Middle English period, around 1500. However, all modern Germanic languages save English and Scots retain the more general sense, for example, German tier and Norwegian dyr mean animal. Terminology <inaudible> 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 For many types of deer in modern English usage, the male is a buck and the female a doe, but the terms vary with dialect, and according to the size of the species. The male red deer is a stag, while for other large species the male is a bull, the female a cow, as in cattle. In older usage, the male of any species is a heart, especially if over five years old, and the female is a hind, especially if three or more years old. The young of small species is a fawn and of large species a calf, a very small young may be a kid. A castrated male is a javier. The group of any species is a herd. The adjective of relation is servine, like the family name servidae, this is from Latin, servus, meaning stag or deer. Topic. See also Deer management Australian Deer Association Deer Forest Reindeer hunting in Greenland